Hello there. This is the introduction to a series I'm going to be doing about phones. Um, and it's a very niche series, so if you're not interested in phones or freaking or hacking or technology, then you might not want to watch this series. But I'm going to be doing a series of episodes on uh, a very specific type of office phone um, that I've always found interesting and about its very weird peculiarities. Okay, before we begin, we should define what freaking is. So, the short answer is freaking is like hacking with a phone, but the real answer is freaking in its classic sense basically means taking a phone um, that a normal person would have, just the end user device. Most people pick up a phone, they dial seven or ten digits, it rings, they talk to someone, or they leave a voicemail, they hang up and they don't think about it. But there's a lot of other digits they can dial, there's a lot of other sounds, tones, clicks, things that um, can be exploited, discovered, looked at. There's a lot of things that you can do with phones, like dialing numbers in different combinations, dialing every possible, you know, sequence of numbers. You can listen to, you know, error messages, voice, you know, voicemail prompts. You can listen to the clicks as calls are being processed. There's a lot of information that can come out of this, and there's a lot of bizarre scenarios you can create that the people that designed these, you know, software were not necessarily intending to occur, and then weird things happen. And the particular type of phone we're going to be talking about today, lots of weird things happen because it's a very weird system. This is the Nortel T7100. It's uh, one of the most common phones being used in businesses today, but they're being ripped out by the millions and being replaced with IP phones. For a number of reasons, IP phones are significantly cheaper and easier to maintain. And because what a phone system really is at its heart is just software and you know an interface to connect with the hardware where the phones are, when you remove that hardware piece, and you just use the IP network, your Ethernet network in your office that's already there for your computers to connect your phones, then the phone system is really just software. And it can run really cheaply in a virtual machine or on a very small scale server. As opposed to huge phone systems that take up huge cabinets or rows or, or many cabinets in a, in a telco room. Businesses used to have entire rooms dedicated to the telecommunications equipment, entire racks and cabinets and, and punch down blocks with all kinds of wires going to them, but IP telephony gets rid of all that. You're going to see less and less of these as time goes on as they're replaced with IP phones, so thus the need to kind of document the weird peculiarities of the system and the way that these phones are kind of really different from most PBX or, or or even just standard POTS lines. Most, most office phone systems are completely different from standard POTS phone lines, but in this case it just goes above and beyond what you're used to. One thing I should point out is that when these phones are idle they do display the time and date, so you will be able to see the exact time and date I'm recording this, and you will see the time jump around as I edit, so that's something to look out for. So the reason I'm doing this series is because I recently got one of these systems. Um, they're really cheap these days because, like I said, they're being ripped out. Um, and I've encountered this series many times in my life. First at my high school, then at my first job, then in many stores that I used to go to. So I'm very familiar with this. I've had to use it. Um, it's been part of my childhood, so that's why I have a vested interest in this. The other reason is that um, I found a lot of very bizarre things that I haven't found documented anywhere else on the internet about the way that the logic in the Nortel switches seems to work and some very bizarre circumstances that I found I wouldn't really call them bugs but just some undefined or unexplained or undocumented behaviors in the system when you do certain things that probably weren't anticipated I'm going to be doing I'm going to be covering the series front to back so I'm going to be starting with the phone and if we do discuss the actual phone system itself, that will be much, much later. I kind of want to have this unravel as I discovered how this works, basically from the user interface backwards. A lot of videos go into, you know, they start with the back end, they start with setting up the actual system and configuring it. Um, but that's not the fun of freaking. The fun of freaking is starting with the device that everyone has access to, the, the thing that's exposed to you as an end user, and using it to figure out you know, the intricacies of the system and making it do very weird and bizarre things that um, are either 
unexpected or are expected but most people don't know about. Um, but that's, that's the whole point, is we're just going to be showing you from this point how it's different from a normal phone system, some of the weird behaviors that it has, and, and some contemplation as to why maybe they did things this way. We're going to be using two phones. This is a T7100. It's a very small phone. It's a very common phone. This is the first North Star phone that I've ever used. Um, and this is a T7316, uh, which is a much larger phone. Um, the premise is basically the same across all of the North Star series. All of the functions, the features are exactly the same. The reason why I'm showing you on two different phones is because there are some features that are slightly different on phones that have line buttons from phones that don't have line buttons because the way that you enter codes is a little bit different when you actually have this. The other difference is that this is a two-line display phone and this is a one-line display phone. For the most part, North Star phones are exactly the same. The, the second line actually is never used for anything other than showing you what these three buttons do. These are soft buttons. And if they have a function, the function will show up on the second line of the LCD. That second line of the LCD will never be used for anything else other than showing you the soft key functions on a native North Star system. There's, there's ways to retrofit these phones into newer systems like an Avaya IP office or a UCX, in which case that second line might actually get more use. But um, on a normal Nortel phone, the top line of this display is pretty much the same thing you get on the only line of this display. There are many different styles in North Star phones. This is an older one. This is a M7310. Um, and there are different colors. For example, here is a, here is a beige one. Um, and they come in, I think, black, slate, tan, or white, or whatever the one you just saw was. And I think they made a limited run of red, too, at one point. Um, but the way that you'll know that it's a North Star phone is that it has a feature button. Nortel makes a lot of different phone systems, and some of them are not North Star phones. Some of them are the earlier Meridian phones. Some of them are the newer series phones. But the way that you'll tell a North Star phone is that it always has a button that either it's it's always a gray button. It either says feature in text, or on the newer phones it has the Nortel logo. And likewise, these three buttons are always the same. There's always a feature, a hold, and a release button, and they're always these three colors: feature, hold, release. The other dead giveaway is that when they're idle, they always display the date and time uh, in this format if the phone is set to English, month, day, time, in 12-hour format. And for those of you that do know about the back ends, these are running on a BCM50. To put things into perspective for anyone that knows the system already. Okay, so we're going to deal with the basics. You pick up the phone, you get a dial tone. I don't know if you can hear that. It's a dial tone. Same thing here. That's pretty standard. I think you'd be pretty pissed off if you picked up a phone and you heard something different. Um, that's pretty much where the similarities with normal phones ends. Um, let me go over the quick ways that we're going to operate the phone real quick so that I don't have to explain them later. Um, obviously, picking up the phone uses the handset. Um, if the phone has a hands-free or speakerphone, um, hitting any line that picks up the phone basically invokes that if you don't have the handset off the hook. You can also manually open the speakerphone by hitting the middle button here. Um, the button on the right is the headset button. If you have a headset, it will turn the headset on. There's a separate headset port. If you don't have a headset, it will say, need headset, and then it will just go to speaker. And the button to the left of this is the mute button, so when it's flashing, and this applies to speakerphone or the handset, but it does reset every time you go back and forth between the handset and the speakerphone. If you want to stay muted, you'll have to keep hitting the mute button, and that's normal operation. You can switch between speakerphone and the handset as much as you want. Uh, just pick up the handset as you would expect. It goes right to the handset. If you uh, press the speaker button while you're on the handset, it'll switch to the speaker, and then you can hang up. One really bizarre feature of Nortel, it's not a bizarre feature, it's actually a cool feature that I haven't seen anywhere else. If you're actually on a call and you pick up the phone, let's say you're on speakerphone, and you pick up the phone and hang it up really quickly, um, within a certain threshold, it won't hang up the phone. Normally, once you pick up the handset, it's a normal handset call, and when you hang up, you've hung up on the call, the call ends. 
but if you pick up and hang up quick enough, and I'll show you later when we actually have a call, um, it will just go back to the speakerphone because it, you know, it's basically in case, you know, you fumble the handset when you pick it up, you don't want to hang up on the person. I guess a lot of people do that because they're idiots, but one of the first things I learned early on about this system is that it is completely digital. There is no normal analog line. There is no flash. There's no DTMF. There's no polarity reversal. Uh, if you were to plug a phone into the actual port that this phone is plugged into, you would hear a loud static noise because it's all digital data. Um, Nortel has a proprietary protocol, um, and there's only a few companies that have made things that interface with these phones other than Nortel. This also means that every phone has to have its own dedicated line all the way back to the phone system. You can't connect two phones to the same wire. If you try to split it, uh, it wouldn't work. What would happen, in my experience, is either one phone will come up and the other one will just refuse to initialize, or they will both initialize, but you won't be able to use one. The second you try to pick it up, the other one will, like, freeze. So you can't put them on the same line. They all have to have dedicated lines all going back to the, the network. And the ports do matter. And I'll, quick, I'll quickly show you what happens uh, when the phone initializes. If you pull the line cord out and you put it back in, the phone basically does this. Um, they call it the flashing lights dance. The, the uh, light up here, the LED indicator flashes, and all the line buttons flash. And this is roughly the same behavior altogether. On the older phones um, that don't have line buttons or the LED, on the display it just says dot, 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 dot while it's initializing. Um, and that's about how long it takes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer from, for bizarre reasons. If the phone system's busy, I guess it waits until uh, it's available to initialize a phone. If you try to initialize two phones at once, you'll find that one initializes first and then the other one has to wait for that one to be done. So there's some process that occurs. And that is the end of this part. Um, in the next part, we will actually place a call and dial something.